speaking today about Iris and Kalim. Iris and Kalim, okay? We've introduced this large topic of how Hashem is this endless source of energy, love, very, very powerful, exceptional goodness, shining. And in the analogy, that was the sun. And the sun is this very, very powerful energy. And the creation of the rays coming off the sun. The rays coming off the sun have identity when you move far away from the sun. But if you trace the rays back to the sun, they start to lose their independent identity. They become absorbed back into the oneness of the source. And therefore, the entire of creation, the chiddish, the power of creation is such that Hashem is not only creating creation all the time, that's the power of the sun, i.e. the rays have no independent existence without the source, the sun. But not only that, that the rays, i.e. creation, because they're being constantly created at every single second, that creation doesn't just explode due to the power of the source. Remember, the sun is just an analogy. If Hashem is the endless force of all creation and is creating everything, Every, all creation every single second, so why don't we, don't we just explode? Remember, we said the analogy of a nuclear power plant, and we're only able to experience the energy that comes out of the wall because you reduce the energy. But imagine we were to go and try to charge our phones in the nuclear reactor itself. It wouldn't be too good for the phone. It would be just too much power. So God holds back that energy. And this is the verse that King David taught us. Ki shemesh umogein Hashem alukim. God, you have a sun, and the sun has a shield. And the shield is holding back the rays of the sun. So to speak, the ozone layer, the atmosphere, and that's the analogy. And good thing that it's protecting the rays of the sun, otherwise it would just get too hot. So Hashem is the source of all goodness, of all creation, of all love. And in order that the creation doesn't explode, Hashem limits that light. He holds it back. What do we want though, my friends? Do we want Hashem or do we want the limited, the limitation of Hashem? We Do you want more limitation or less limitation? Yummy less. Do we know what's best for it? How do we know what's best for it? Less limitation, like from working to get it, though. Okay, that, that's actually a sophisticated answer, yes, because then you could handle less limitation. We want as little limitation as possible, but we want to be able to handle the light. If the light is too strong, then we can't handle that level of relationship. But we want it. We want the light. We want that level of closeness. That's really what we're going for, that powerful level of closeness. And we want to experience that powerful level of closeness, but we need vessels. We're going to use this language now. We need vessels to hold back the light in order that we could exist, in order that we can exist. So, anybody been out on a really sunny day? Was it hard to exist, to see, to be outside? Yeah, yeah you probably need sunglasses, need some way to reduce the light to enjoy the day. Now imagine it was the sunniest day you could ever imagine, times 10. Would that be pleasant? No. So how do you enjoy the day? It's too intense for me. 
So you would need even stronger sunglasses, stronger sunscreen, whatever it is, in order to allow that you can experience the day. Let's change the analogy a little bit. What if you go on a date with somebody? And, and the guy, he's dating this very nice girl, and he goes on a date, and all of a sudden, he just, he says, oh, you know, what's your name? She says, uh, Sprincy, what's your name? You know, Yanko. And then Yanko goes on to just, well, let me tell you about myself. And he just, he's just like high beams, just nonstop talking for like two hours straight. All over smoking. Yeah. All about himself, everything, whoa, whoa, crazy, everything. And she just like, and then he gets up after two hours and he says, well, I had a lovely time, thank you very much. <laughs> so, and so, you know, he calls the Shadchan, so, what did Prince think? She, he didn't give her, like, she was overwhelmed by the light. It was too powerful. You hear the analogy here? It, was, oh, it wasn't light, it wasn't like a spotlight, but it was, it was too much. It was too powerful. And she maybe didn't have the vessels to receive that amount of light. And most people don't have that amount of vessels. Unless, by the way, uh, you're being paid for it, and I'll explain why. Because Rabbi Willig said a funny thing one time. He said, I, Rabbi Willig is a wonderful therapist, so he said that one time he had one of the, a client that came in and that uh, he sat down, like on, you know, the Rabbi Willig, you know, nice comfy couch, and then just he said, okay, so, you know, why don't you, you know, tell me a little bit about what's going on. So he literally just said, Rabbi, and Rabbi Willig just said, okay, 60 minutes went by, Rabbi Willig didn't say one word. <laughs> And the guy just, he looked, I guess, oh, I guess, I guess that, 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 that's it. He said, thank you, Rat. It was, this was so I, I beneficial. Thank you so much. Sent them the money. Said that was like the best there. Rebel Willig said it was the, you know. That was it. That was it. He didn't say, he didn't say one word. though. He was just like completely quiet. So that's what I mean. He had Caleb for that because, you know, it's okay. He's going to be paid either way. So that's also called a kli. You could handle that much ore if you have a kli for that amount of ore. That person was just like, just piling it on. You need to have kalim for the ore in order to experience it. What else are kalim? Let's continue to shift the analogy so we get this, in, we get this clear. So once we read into the text, we'll see what it means. He's about to say a few Kabbalistic points. A job. Is a job Oiris or Kalim? Kalim, that's Oiris. The salary is Oiris. Okay, so the salary, yeah. The salary is a lot of Oiris because you can, you can do anything with this. It's got a lot of potential. It's a way to express Oiris. But holding down the job, being consistent, it could be a lot of Kalim. It could be a lot of like constricting. You wake up in the morning. In your head, you could do basically anything. So imagine this, you wake up in the morning, you think to yourself, you know, I can go to work today. I could go buy a dog and walk it. I could run to be the president of the United States of America, start a whole campaign today. I could watch a Netflix episode. I could go on a world trip around the globe on a sailboat for 250 days if I so choose. Can you do any of those things? Mm -hmm. And how many other options? A lot. A lot. All of those options are just oiris in your mind, just potential. How long could you spend a day doing that? All day. Some people spend all day. Some people spend their whole life just thinking of all the amazing things that they could do. And they're like, they're attaching themselves to all these oiris, all this potential. But until you get out of your bed and actually choose one of them, do you have anything? Until you get out of your bed and actually choose one of them. So you might think, oh, I don't want to choose. You're like limiting me. 
Like, oh, don't, oh, he's the man. Like, stop, like, putting me in your boxes. I wanted to run for the president while buying a dog and going around the world for 250 days on a sailboat and start raising bunnies and plant a garden at the same time. But I can't. So you gotta choose one. So choosing is very restricting. But then you actually have something. Then you've taken that potential and you've put it into a vessel that's now relatable. Now you could do something with it. Let's go back to Hashem is this great, great light. Hashem is deeper than that. This is just the way that we speak. So maybe what I should do is just sit and meditate all day on the vastness of Hashem's light. So Hashem says, that is an important thing to do, but I want to take that light and I want to bring it into vessels for you to relate to. You know what a vessel is? A clee. Here's one. Put on tefillin. That's a clee. Here's one. Give tzedakah. Here's one. Put on tzitzis. You have to take that light and you have to start putting it into vessels. You know what the most powerful vessels we have? We're going to talk, there's even higher levels of this, is Hebrew letters. Oisius. Hebrew letters are vessels that contain light. Hebrew letters are, not only do you see them, the ink on a page, but they're analogies, they're conceptual. The Hebrew letters are there to bring light into an idea that you can actually now relate to. How do you take this infinite light and start grasping it? The answer is through letters. I start creating now vessels where I can start grasping concepts. Which is interesting, that's the way that we relate to other people is through speech. Speech, letters. People who are much more or oris chevra, so I happened to ha I hung out with a lot of these chaver growing up. This is like more. So, one of the things is that like, if you ha if you hang out, like one of the things that you'd want to do is like, if you're really into iris, you just hang out and just like look each other in the eye. You know, because like, words are so like they reduce everything like so much. <laughs> They're so limiting. Like, this relationship is way too deep to even say anything. <laughs> even your name, Daniel, we can't even, we're not even going to use names. <laughs> names, like, names, like, limit the oneness. So we're just going to be quiet now. And just go into the infinite space together. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a very, like, it's a very helpful thing that uh, mainly this generation is lacking. It's like being able to just be... Oh, so if I'm very much on the side of Oiris, would you agree that it's an intelligent thing to also have Kalim to kind of bring that? Now, what if we haven't gone the other direction? What if a person is very much into Kalim, that all they do is just speak, and they don't give space for, um, for the or? Let's give an example of that. You know, Kalim can be very much like, I go to work, I do what you need to do, and uh, get the job done, pay the bills, and you can have a marriage like this, where both of them just go through their daily routine. Everyone does what you have to, does what you're expected, and eventually, at a certain point, the couple thinks to themselves, like, is, th is this why we, like, like, what happened? What do you mean? Like, I'm doing my job, I'm going to work, but I don't buy you, you know, nice things. I didn't buy you a car, new dresses, outfits. I don't do this for you. I don't change the light bulbs, take out the garbage, do carpool. And often what it will really come out as in one of the sides will be something along the lines of you don't look at me like you did under the chuppah anymore. I, 
you're a nice guy, but I had more in mind when we got married. It's true, you know, I appreciate that you, uh, that you, that you, that you do all the things you need to, and you're a responsible guy, and you work, and it's, I appreciate that. And there's a lot of kalim, but you know, you know, a bit felt in the iris. What happened to the lights? What happened to the iris? What happened to the, the romance? You know, the Rashiva says an amazing thing. It's a very deep thing, and I don't want it to be misunderstood, because it's a very profound point. The Rashi, you know, generally, what I'm going to explain is something that we're not, you know, so, so favorable of. But you'll understand what I mean. The Rosh Hashiva says, it's a bit sad that people don't read romance novels anymore. What does the Rosh Hashiva mean by that? Now, by the way, it's not even Pasha, you know, especially if they're also romance novels, you know, like <laughs> vulgar or, you know, very, nowadays, you've you got to be careful. It, you know, very provocative things that are just not appropriate. <laughs> so that, that's not... But the idea, and the Rashi was speaking about a long time ago, already then, it was a shame that people didn't read romance novels. What does the Rashi mean? He means, it's a shame that we lost that spark, that we lost that love, we lost that silence in the relationship of being able to go to kind of the infinite part, even with the kalim, the day-to-day -day grind of life. The day-to-day -day grind of life is the kalim. You're going to get married? We're going to get married. Where are we going to live? Psh, don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, what about a kli? Like, you know, a house is a kli. We're going to live on a beach. This guy's got it all figured out. We're going to live on the beach. Iris, I live on the beach. Wow. What if other people want to move to our beach? We'll go with the flow when that happens, you know, we'll take a, we'll, I know that's the right answer, you know. She's going to say, I, I think we should have, you know, a bias, like probably a house. Will you, like, will you build us at least a hut on the beach? I'll think about it. Okay, okay, we're moving in the right direction. Kalem, we're already at least getting somewhere. He just wanted to just be on the beach. That's just... So you live in now a big house somewhere. Now the other d direction. The guy lives in a giant house somewhere. And, you know, there's security. And it's all great. And it's a house. And there's, there's money in the bank. So, but she says, but you never take me to the beach. So you need both. You need to have that light, the iris of like, so why did we get married? Yeah, maybe it is nice to go to the beach and see the sunset together. You need that. But you can't live on the beach. You know, eventually, your wife says, can we go home? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to go back to the Kalim. But you know what the secret is? That even when you're in the Kalim, that you see the iris. That the Kalim are really made out of iris. Okay, that's a very... If you caught that last point, the Kalim are made out of iris. That's when you know you're really getting somewhere. That you're no longer limited by the Kalim. The grind of living in the Kalim is no longer problematic because the kalim are also made out of iris. Because when you get to the higher worlds, which we're going to talk about, God is going to make light to store the... God is going to make kalim... I did it again. God is going to make kalim to store the light. So, why? Because God wants to limit that light. You know, people have beach houses? Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's already like the house is already a bit of a... a the kalim are made out of or. A beach house is already much more like you. You got to be into Kalem made out of iris to have a beach house. It's already. <laughs> so in that sense, it's like the fill in and dominating and when you do it and all that is Kalem that's stored in the iris. Yes, but if a person never knew, like, what am I? Why am I putting on film? Just Kalem. Just put it on. The Lord said so. Yeah, but what is filling? Mm. Not are my kosher my tefillin kosher. That's Kalem. You got to know. But what is tefillin? So once you learn what is tefillin, you're learning that even in the kalim, they're filled with iris. Why don't you lean on something when you dive in Shemana Esrei? That's a halach. You're not supposed to lean on something with so much force that you would fall. Okay, make sure you don't do that. Weiter. Yeah, that's a halacha. That's a big kli. But what is that halacha teaching me? 
the halachas are filled with iris. So the kalim, we're going to see, the way that Hashem runs the world is that and creates the world is He has this great light. But He needs to limit the light. The light has to be reduced in order to allow for creation to exist. Otherwise, we'd just be burned up by the light. Every one of the kalim has a certain element to it that represents, that shows something else and creates something else and runs the world in another way. I'm going to use the analogy from the Ramak, Rav Moshe Kodavero, that imagine you have a light going in to a vase made out of crystal, and the vase is, is a red vase. And you see the light coming out of the glass. You see what color light? See red. Let's say you have a red window and light coming through the window. What's, what light do you see on the other side of the window? See red. You see that nothing changed about the light. The light's still the same light, but you're experiencing red. The vessels that Hashem has, like sunglasses, are taking this light and they're starting to reduce the light, but they're also starting to create or do things with this ore. Now, referring to spheres, spheres or kalim, but what we're talking about is that don't think the spheres are just a bunch of colors. The sphere of chesed is much more than just a colored piece of glass. The sphere of chesed is now Hashem's infinite light is coming into this vessel and is now going to be revealed in the way that Hashem runs the world through kindness. But use the analogy that when the light comes through the glass, nothing's changing in the light. It's the same light. Just the light is now looking red. It's expressing in a red way. So now take the glass, and this glass is going to be called chesed, kindness. And God is going to come take this light through the letters ches, samach, and dalad. And this is now going to express itself in certain ways called God bringing kindness to the world, blessing, goodness. Then there's going to be other vessels where it's going to express in other ways, givura, and then tiferes. It's all though a process of God's light coming into the world and being reduced and also taking form with purpose. This is all the way that when we talk about Hashem is creating the world Yudke Vavke is the sun, and Elohim is the shield. What we're talking about is that Yudke Vavke is the general way we speak about Hashem creating constantly, and Elohim is the general way we speak about Hashem running this world. These are the two main names of Hashem, that Yudke Vavke is creating everything, and Elohim is then blocking that high energy and bring it into what we call Elohim, which is nature. So when you look outside, do you see God willing this, the, the, the Kaisal into existence every second? Maybe you do. Do you see God literally creating it every single second? Or you just see rock? Probably the latter. You probably just see why, because it looks to you like it's just physical rock, like nature. And when you see water, you see that water is following gravity's pattern and staying down. But what the Jews saw during the splitting of the sea is all of a sudden we saw water going up. We saw the suspension of water going down. We started to peel away Elohim. We started to peel away nature and we saw that Hashem can manipulate anything. He's the creator, sustainer of the whole world every second. Every single miracle is when we remove Elohim and we start to see Yudke Vavke. You, so to speak, are removing the Kalim and you're getting to the Or. 
And therefore, yes, Eliyahu, when you, when you have that moment with somebody, you want to be able to remove the kalim. You want to be able to just be with them, so to speak, the yud ke vav ke, if you will, of them. Okay, this is going to be the process that we're going to talk about next time, is the whole system of oiris and kalim, of lights, coming into vessels. Light is what you want. Light is it. But you can't handle it because it would be like going to the center of the sun. There wouldn't be a you. You need to hold back the rays in order to allow for relationship existence. But really, you want it. You want to just encounter Hashem without the veils of nature. And yes, why, Jacob, are the veils of nature here in order that we could choose? In order to allow for free will to exist. Okay, my friends, this is part one of Oyrus and Kalim. We should be Zaycha Mamish to Mashiach Sidkenu to see Mamish peace and blessing for all of humanity. Besiat Deshmai Bimhir Vimina Amen. 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 Amen.